So everybody knows that Warrior Cats has a pretty bad grasp on cat biology, but I'm under the impression that they do in fact want to imply that, in most ways, these are real cats. This makes things like walking around a few days after being born and cats dying of old age at five years old mistakes. And don't you dare try to tell me that it's normal for feral cats to die of old age at five. Cats don't have shorter natural lifespans just because they live outside. They have shorter natural lifespans because they get hit by cars, attacked by wild animals, and sick, and all sorts of other terrible things that can happen if you let your cat outside. These are all things that can kill a warrior cat too, but the ones who don't die of some unnatural cause are usually living about as long as an actual cat. You do have to keep in mind that these are cats living in the forest, but they're cats living in the forest who have magic medicine that pretty much cures everything every single time that they set out to cure someone. Actually, I'm pretty sure most of the green cough, yellow cough, or black cough deaths are in between books. Did I say yellow cough? That only shows up like once or twice, does- Ah, uh, never mind, never mind. The warrior cats sleep in warm dens and even keep themselves checked for fleas and ticks. Somehow. They shouldn't have lifespans that are differing from normal cats. Granted, realistically, if they're getting ticks all the time, every single one of these heckers has little kitty Lyme disease. It's weird to me when people say cats should retire at 10, because this implies to me, if we're being accurate to cats, that the cat will go to the elder's den for nearly over a third of its life. But that's also seemingly how Warrior Cats has been, with cats like Greystripe being an elder for what is now quite a few years, or Purdy being an elder in Arc 2 and then living for the better part of three more. Hollyleaf's entire life takes place while Purdy is an elder. Then he goes on to live for seemingly three years after that. So maybe being an elder in Warriors is less like being 70 and more like being... 45. Which begs the question as to why they act like all their bones are breaking right out of the warrior's den, but whatever. We also have a situation where Greystripe is only a few moons older than Frostfur's surviving litter of Thornclaw, Brackenfur, and Brightheart, but was made an elder years before with Thornclaw, who was apprenticed together with his sister, remaining outside of it. I would argue that maybe becoming an elder, or more so not becoming an elder, might be a choice. But then again, it feels like there's a lot of things that we just don't get properly explained in Warrior Cats. Like, what defines an elder? How old are they supposed to be? What kind of accomplishments have they had? Like, what makes you old enough to become old in Warrior Cats? It's just not explained. It's a bit of a derailment, but I'm frustrated because there's so much about Warrior Cats that is just kind of abstract. It's not something that we can access. Uh, e even when we have perspectives of people who are, like, going to get an apprentice, for example, we don't really get an explanation as to why they are getting that apprentice anymore. It, it just, it, everything feels a little arbitrary. What I want is for, you know, us to know, hey, Squirrel Flight got Foxpaw because Foxpaw's a handful and Squirrel Flight was a handful, you know what I mean? I don't want it to be completely mysterious as to why every choice was made in the series. But this especially goes for elders, which more recently have been going to the Elder's Den just in between books. Thornclaw especially is a total mystery because it's like, did they purposefully leave him out of the Elder's Den? Because obviously I've been making jokes about that since before they did it. But did they do it on purpose? Or did they just forget how old Thornclaw is? Because they seem to do this thing very, very frequently, where they don't really imply very much that Brackenfur, Brightheart, and Thornclaw are from the same litter. I guess on some level I understand, because every single one of his siblings has had some important part to play, or at least is memorable. But, eh. You'd think that if they did something like this on purpose, they would at least have like a throwaway line about it, like Brashbull Star saying, Ah, uh, yes, I remember when Thornclaw refused to go to the Elder's Den, and that could be, like, basically all you had to do. But anyways, back on topic. We've also got Apprentices, which from a design perspective are actually done well, in my opinion. They're children for six months, long enough for them to be nearly fully grown, not quite, they're not filled out and they're actually a little bit shorter, but large enough that on a physical level they're not being left behind by their mentors. 
That said, the books are constantly telling you that apprentices are small. Not to mention there's definitely going to be situations in which a cat on the smaller side gets an apprentice who's larger than them. An apprentice isn't a little baby kitten, and it really will come down to genetics how big it is at any given age. But it's not going to be like a half the size of the mentor situation. Not to mention the fact that the cats don't stop growing when they become apprentices, and the apprenticeship lasts quite a few months, so by the time it's over, they would definitely be on par with their mentors in size. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm under the impression that the months that it takes to become a warrior pretty much changes for every single character. Not that Warrior Cats keeps count, because nobody keeps count of anything but how old their kids are. I think it's appropriate to compare a newly apprenticed cat to a 14-year-old child. Still a child, mentally, but large enough physically to be able to spar and train and learn how to be part of their little warrior cat society. But keeping in mind the size of real cats can put better perspective on what some elements of warrior cats implies. For example, the kittens being apprenticed by Broken Star were very small, being only three moons old. This is just impossibly wrong, because a cat that's barely half the size of its mentor isn't ready for that sort of battle training. Plus, a kitten that young still very clearly looks like a kitten. There's also Swiftpaw and Brightpaw, which, at the time of his death, Swiftpaw was far beyond the age where he would have become a warrior, and very likely was a fully grown cat. Another example is how queens will imply there isn't enough room in the nursery. Of course there's no room, imagine if there were four nearly youth-sized children trampling around in the infant hole. I don't want to imply to you that cats are at their full limit at six months, because obviously they're still kind of lanky. Even if they're nearly the height they're going to be at, they do fill out after that, getting uh, bulkier physically. You might be wondering, though, why I'm so into the sizes and ages of cats when I reject ideas of warrior cats realism in other areas. Well, I counter with this. In a fantasy novel about magic humans, you still assume that the humans age normally, even if some of them have bright red hair or cure diseases with plants. Most abnormalities in warrior cats are told to us directly. The cats can speak. The cats practice religion. The cats can do magic. The cats can cure wounds. The cats can go to heaven. This also applies to, say, cats who have blue eyes that genetically would never be able to have them, like Crowfeather. And yes, I know that there are rare cat breeds in which you can breed blue eyes into a cat, but those are rare cat breeds and these are cats living outside. It's way more plausible to me that warrior cats just bends the rules of biology in some areas than to say, oh, this cat's actually a Persian, it was born that way, in the middle of the feral wild cat colony. Granted, I'm not really fond of the idea of applying cat breeds to cats within warrior cats. Th this is kind of in part because I think that it's more fun to just mix and match whatever traits you would like on the cat, and also because I'm just not really that keen on purebred cats. I feel like there's a big misunderstanding with cats where people don't understand that most of the cats that you see, most of the cats that people have, they're not a breed of cat. Sure, you could call them a domestic short hair, but my domestic short hair is going to be totally different genetically than yours. Warrior Cats has given us reason to believe that cats can be yellow, but no reason to believe that they have a different lifespan or growth cycle than a normal cat. We know that cats can live outside and survive outside believably, and that basic level of believability is what keeps Warrior Cats afloat, while cats can also talk and cleanly amputate limbs with rocks. Granted, I know rock amputation is where some people jump off the ship. And me saying cats can survive outside should not in any way convince you that you should ever let your cats outside. There are some things that blur the line when it comes to ignorance of cat biology and purposeful fantasy. For example, many cats will be born with their eye colors. Ignoring for a second that a kitten doesn't open their eyes for 10 days, or so, a kitten will also have dull, dark blue eye colors when it's born, and the real color in their eyes won't develop until a little while later. But in warrior cats, the kitten blinks open its eyes, and sometimes you can see, oh, it has green eyes or amber, and some kittens get named after that color, so is it purposeful? Like, cats being blue? Is it a misunderstanding? I'm not sure. I know if it were me, writing a book about animals, I would want to keep most of the biological aspects as accurate as possible, and only really deviate in certain aesthetic areas for the interest of the reader. Or the interest of myself as the person writing it. So maybe reading things like this as purposeful changes is just better for the health of the reader. Myself. The better for the health of myself.